city center, we go in the Magnolia Room. And by now, you probably gather that we are all proud of this, uh, this complex that we have here. We're so proud to have you here at our monthly leadership luncheon. Uh, today, we're going to feature one of our crown jewels in Missouri City Eastern Community College. Uh, I'm sure there are other cities like Houston who will say the same thing, but we take ownership of it. That's why you're in here. <laughs> I didn't quite figure out why I'm up here today, but rumors are yeah, they picked the best looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that ain't the reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to, I'd like to introduce a few people. Mayor Owens, who just burst my bowl a few seconds ago. <laughs> Please give a round of applause for Mayor Owens. And my colleague on council is Councilman Floyd Embry, Councilman District <laughs> And we have our city manager who really runs the city. We just cheer the for him. It's Andrew, so please welcome him. <laughs> we have two guest speakers, but I'm going to hold off uh, and introduce them right now. And we also have uh, Nita, Nita Sani. Nita Sani. <laughs> Please, Nita, take that, put that ball down, set up that ball. <laughs> so, Nita, trust you. I talk to Nina occasionally, and she's so chipper all the time. I really appreciate the zeal in which you answer my dumb questions, Nina. Thank you. Houston Community College. I guess everyone in the room knows a little bit about it, but I want to highlight a few things. Uh, Houston Community College is one of the largest institutions of higher education in the country with more than 7,000 students each semester, including more international students, which comprise of about uh, nearly 8% than any community college in the country. Join students from near and far Houston Community College mirrors the diversity and the opportunity of the world-class city that Houston is, and including Missouri City of Miami. Since its opening in 1971, more than 1 1.3 million students have improved their lives through education and training from Houston Community College. And we have two representatives today who speak to you tell you a little bit about the success of these community college. The first one, in 2008, Dr. Fina Garza was named Houston Community College Southwest President, transferring from a post as president of Houston Community College's Southeast College, where she served for four years. Dr. Garza has more than 30 years of community college experience, including 20 years at administrative level, she received a PhD in Educational Human Resource Management in Higher Education from Texas A&M. And I've worked uh, with Dr. Garza on occasion, and it's not a mystery to me why this campus is on by the time. And the other is Dr. Betty Young, and as president of Houston Community College, it's John B. Coleman, MD College for Health Science. Dr. Betty Young is leading the five-year-old institution through a tremendous period of growth and expansion. Just in the past nine months since he was appointed by ACC Chancellor Dr. Mary Springer, Dr. Young has initiated the Houston Healthcare Career Academy, a one-semester program that fills entry-level positions in the Texas Medical Center with eager to learn students who can then work in a healthcare environment and attend school concurrently. That's me. And knowing Dr. Jeremy Coleman, I'm, I'm sure you'll be proud of the individual. So without any further ado, and I don't know which order we're coming up, I gather it's Dr. Garvey. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause to Dr. Garvey. Thank you. Good afternoon. 
It's wonderful to see everyone here this, this uh, noon time for lunch. Normally it's breakfast, but uh, lunch would seem to work out pretty well for the first time anyway. Uh, first of all, I just want to recognize a person who is such a hard worker in your community and who keeps us in the limelight all the time, and she's already been recognized by Councilman Smith. But I just want to say from our end, we so appreciate her presence and that is Trustee Sani, because uh, she is the one that's the mover and shaker at the table. And guess what happens at the table? That's where the money's distributed. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, a uh, very, very important person, and thank you for joining us today at lunch. I will be presenting a little bit about what we already have and what is proposed to come uh, for Missouri City. And Dr. Betty Young uh, will be presenting uh, on the Coleman College. Uh, Missouri City campus was um, a joint venture partly with uh, the county. A lot of y'all know that the library there really uh, belongs to the county, but we use it as well. And so we've leveraged our resources. And this particular campus has been very successful. Andrew Johnson, who's with us here today, uh, is our campus administrator and works in the community, uh, letting everyone know what's happening and what we have to offer. Primarily, it's been a two-year core curriculum transfer campus. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what's to come. Um, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whoa, that's a dark, uh, that's a dark slide. I know I'm getting old, but... Uh, <laughs> Let me see what, what that one is. It says learning time. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you a little bit more. The 45,000 square feet academic center is the uh, Missouri City campus. Uh, the total capacity there will be approximately 2,400 students. And we reached a little bit more than half in our fall and spring semesters. So um, we really are working hard with our superintendent. Uh, and uh, we are looking at some other possibilities for dual credit on campus and some other options as well. And as you know, uh, dual credit for those who are in our taxing district is free. That means your high school students can attend college and uh, get their college credits and not have to pay any tuition at all. So this is something that we're working on with the uh, new superintendent. Now, your neighbor at Stafford, they are also part of Southwest College, and uh, they will also um, be receiving uh, a workforce building, uh, just like um, Missouri City, and I'll talk a little bit more about it, but the latest thing in, uh, in Stafford, no, that's, that's fine. The latest thing in Stafford is that we renovated uh, one of our buildings, which we're famous for. We renovate all the time. Uh, uh, into a fine arts center. So uh, we have a lot of free plays that we have in the community there all year long, some wonderful music recitals and uh, wonderful art, uh, the art exhibit display there. Um, we have a 75-seat theater and a 96-seat music recital hall. So that's the latest for Stafford. Now, for the real meat and potatoes of why we're here. What's coming soon? Well, you know, we passed a bond. Music Community College was successful. And of that, approximately 80 million um, will be coming to Southwest College. And of that amount, about half will be coming to Fort Bend County. Uh, that would be, of course, partly for Missouri City and partly for uh, Stafford. Now, at Missouri City, first and foremost, we have something coming up that's very new and exciting. Let me see where it is. Guess what? A cricket field <laughs> at Missouri City. Okay, does anybody recognize this? <laughs> okay, so we will have a cricket field first off by the end, hopefully, of this year. 
at the Surrey City, and it's really going to be lovely. It'll have also some uh, walking areas for people who don't play cricket, but who want to come and just walk around and just enjoy uh, the campus scenery. But um, what's very exciting is something that I know as a community and, and uh, especially the businesses have talked about for so long, and that was for us to have a workforce building. So we will have a business entrepreneurship center at uh, Missouri City, a separate standalone building, the, the second one uh, for that area. And we will also offer in the same building the health professions which Dr. Young will talk about a little bit more uh, in her presentation. But this is something that we've waited for for a very long time, and uh, it's finally close. You know, I hope that I'm still around. Um, you heard I've been with the institution 30. That's a lie, I've been 40. Okay. <laughs> I've been with the institution for 40 years. I was practically born there. So anyway, we have um, this coming up real soon. And 2015 will be the approximate uh, completion date for the building, for all of the proposed things that we have in, um, in Missouri City. So we will start advertising, even though that sounds like a long way, we will start advertising and everything that we put out of our public relations and marketing department the coming soon information so people will become aware. We will be inundating the market with um, electronic information as well as um, the hard copies uh, to the different residents and uh, businesses. Okay, with that, I'm going to pass it on to uh, Dr. Betty Young, president of Coleman College. Thank you. And likewise, my bio is a little dated. I've actually been in Houston for four years and I consider this home now. It's a wonderful place to be. When I came to Houston, um, Coleman College has 1,600 students. And our building at the Medical Center was built for 1,600 students, so it worked pretty well. The problem is, I don't like to sit still very long, so today we have right at 4,000 students in the space designed for 1,600 students. So we don't have very much storage space, that's office space now, and former offices have been converted to uh, groups that, that made into classrooms. So, you know, we just have made do. We offer classes on weekends and the evening. I mean, we run uh, a lot of hours at Coleman College for Health Sciences because the demand is so great in the Houston area. And so it's exciting for me now to be working with the other presidents, and particularly with Dr. Garza, and uh, fulfilling really a vision, I think, that our trustees have given us for the future of Houston Community College. And that is that we not only be preeminent, as we have been historically for our transfer programs, but that we also be preeminent when it comes to all of our workforce programs uh, throughout the city. And in particularly, uh, in the case of Coleman College, uh, a preeminent health science uh, college. We really have a unique position in Coleman College uh, for Health Sciences in that um, we are a standalone health science college. That's very unique in the community college world. Uh, programs typically are just housed as a department within community colleges around the country. But because we have the Texas Medical Center, the largest medical center in the world, we have a very unique position. And um, 10 or so years ago, our trustees here had a vision for us having a standalone health science college. Holman College was built. And uh, as I've said, you know, since then we've just flourished. So let me tell you a little bit about some of the programs that we offer. Um, if you think of this sort of in these categories, we cover almost every area of health science with the technicians and the people who surround the doctors, physicians, the nurses, or the um, doctors and dentists in the in health professions. So in nursing, we do the registered nursing program, that's the RN. A lot of people do not realize that you can have a two-year associate degree RN and be a practicing nurse. A lot of people think you have to have a bachelor's degree. Now we do have great transfer programs so that students can go on and complete bachelor's degrees, but they can become licensed nurses with a two-year associate degree from Colton College. 
Uh, we also have the vocational nursing program, which is a one-year certificate program. Many of these students will go to work in our extended care facilities and rehabilitation centers. Under patient care, we have medical assisting. So you know, this is the person you really spend your time with when you go see the doctor, right? <laughs> They're the person who you know checks you in and does all your vitals and tell, you know takes down your history and all that. The doc comes in and it's about this long and leaves, and then the medical assistant comes back with your prescriptions, how you're going to do your follow-ups, all of those kinds of things. Very important role um, today in order for physicians really to have uh, the opportunity to see more patients. We don't have enough physicians. We don't uh, so nurses and, and uh, medical assistants have to work at the top of their game to make sure that those physicians are able to spend their time working in the kinds of uh, work that they need to be at the top of their game. Surgical technology, this is a one-year program. The um, students complete one year and they are able to be the right-hand assistant to the surgeon in the surgical suite. So it's pretty amazing when you think about that. That's a one-year program, but it's pretty intense. And our students at Coleman College uh, scrub in to twice as many surgeries as is required for certification. And we do that because we want a higher level of competency in our, our surgeons, one that out of our graduates. So I now have certain hospitals in the Texas Medical Center that only will interview and hire students from the Coleman College program. It's that kind of reputation that we have built here in the Houston community with the programming that we do. Computer tomography under the diagnostic area, diagnostic medical sonography, nuclear medicine radiography, these are all imaging programs. So if you think of radiography, general x-ray tech in the old days. Well, everything is digital today and pretty high tech. So these are very, very sophisticated programs. And as you all might imagine, the equipment in the laboratories to make these programs viable is also a very expensive proposition for us, which has been a limiting factor for us historically and where all we could offer these programs and why we concentrated our effort in the Texas Medical Center in one facility. But I'll talk a little bit more about how we're going to expand that now and make that work. Histology, a medical laboratory technician. Uh, not everybody is made to have direct patient contact. They really don't want to do that. Okay, so folks who want to work more behind the scenes and doing lab work and so forth, these are great occupations, both to your associate degree programs. Many of our students who complete those programs move on to MD Anderson Baylor and uh, complete bachelor's degrees in medical uh, sciences areas. Under the therapies, we do occupational therapy assistant, physical therapy assistant, and respiratory therapy. In healthcare and administration, all the back office functions, we do that training. Health information, so if you think of um, coding and billing, you think of um, electronic medical records, all of those kinds of things that people require certification in order to be able to work in the field, they can get that also at Coleman College. Human services technology, that's um, the counseling side. Uh, we do a lot of folks who want to get into chemical and dependency counseling. We do the certification for that. Pharmacy technicians, um, we encourage a lot of our students who want to go on in health sciences to begin with pharmacy tech because there's so many jobs. And so many of our students will have to work while they're pursuing a nursing degree or a physical therapy assistant degree. And what better way for them to work than work in a, a related healthcare area, such as a pharmacy technician. Besides, you can work in pharmacy tech in, the, in Houston 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you can work it around uh, school schedules. Dental assisting and dental hygiene are two of our programs in dental. The dental hygiene program is a two-year program, and the demand for that occupation is huge. So when you look at these positions here and you think about the kind of money that people can make coming out of these, you know, nurses today graduating with an RN will be right around $60,000 to start. Okay, not too bad. Dental hygienists, same thing, maybe a little bit higher, around 65. Um, you know, those are on the high end, and then we have other professions such as medical assisting that might start in the mid-30s range. So really, 
uh, you pay, you know, good wages for people in a short amount of time, really, one year to two year programs. Okay. So, <clears throat> we want to expand what we do. This is a drawing of 10,000 square feet that we are now making available to um, the other colleges within the district to expand health sciences. Now, I can't build a Coleman in every district, okay? I can't put all the radiography equipment, all the surgical suites, all of those things in every location because the cost, out of this bond, we're going to build an expansion facility in the Med Center. That expansion facility will cost us $120 million. It's huge. But what we can do is we can provide, and we've got a lot of experience with this over the last several years. We've uh, received a grant, million and a half from the federal government the year I joined Houston. And uh, that grant has allowed us to expand our healthcare programs, the didactic portion, the lecture part for our students, to several locations throughout the city using video conferencing. So in real time, I have a faculty member at one location, maybe at the Coleman location, we have one at A-Leaf, we have one at um, Stafford, Missouri City, one at Stafford, I think. And uh, the faculty member does their lecture, their PowerPoint, and they take questions from students in any of these locations via the video conferencing. Students use a push to talk mic, the camera turns so that you see that particular student, the other classroom then sees that student, and the student's able to speak, ask a question, make a comment, whatever they would do, just as you would if you were in the live classroom. But it allows our students not to have to make that trip into the Texas Medical Center, uh, which can be a barrier for some of our students. And so um, we've got great experience with this, and it's been highly effective for us. So this facility, will include, and this is the plan for Missouri City, will include a video conference room. It will include uh, simulated patient treatment rooms, which will allow us to do the medical assisting program. It um, will allow us to do the mental health program. It gives us a lot of options as to how we will use this facility. You'll notice this big round circle is a nursing station, and each of those squares represents a uh, simulated hospital bed. Now, more and more today, our nurses, LVNs and uh, RNs, are not working in a traditional hospital environment. With the change in healthcare that we have today, many are working in public clinics. So this facility will be designed in such a way that it can simulate those public clinics that will be out in our communities that we'll be using more of, as well as that hospital environment where they'll need to be sure they can practice as well. So we're pretty excited about all of this. Um, 10,000 square feet seems like a lot of space until you start putting all these things in there. We believe that we can offer both the L LVN, the licensed vocational nurse, the RN program, the respiratory therapy program, all using um, this lab facility. Now students will still come into the Texas Medical Center to use some of the high fidelity simulation that we have in place, but they may have to do that once a week or once every two weeks for an intense um, clinical experience, as opposed to having to come every day for class. Again, removing those barriers so that students have uh, more options and more access to the kind of education that they're looking for. Okay. So this is an example of a vital classroom. You'll notice here, these are push to talk mics. You'll notice in the back of the room there are two TVs. So the instructor can see the other classroom, can see her own PowerPoint, watch what's going on. And in the front of the classroom, we have two TVs. And those are, um, uh, they would kill me for saying TVs, OK? High tech, they're monitors, OK? Um, we understand. I'm showing my age here a little, I guess. But those monitors, um, again, show the PowerPoint presentation, show the other classrooms. So the students also can see and be very interactive with everyone. It's, it's just amazing. The students love this technology, by the way. They really do. OK? OK, so that's a little bit about all of our programs. I think, um, you know, I look around at um, the city and see what the demand is. And I speak to a lot of uh, student groups at some of the high schools and uh, people who come to visit our campus. The message that I have for the people in our community is that Houston needs you. 
each and every person. We need each and every person to be able to be a contributing member of our, our community. And in a healthcare career, it's a wonderful way to be able to do that. Um, these are sustainable jobs that can support families, that can, you can make a life with. And so um, we really you know, need to continue to, to support that message out in our community. Houston needs you. Houston Community College will provide you that opportunity. We're affordable. I think that's a critical issue. I want, in the next 10 years of my career, I intend to be a huge advocate for uh, consumer awareness and education. I have never seen it be a big issue as it is today. Education is big business. Okay, don't, don't kid yourself about that. It takes money to run programs, and so if you're not community supported, like Houston Community College is, you have to charge students a lot of money. So we have many schools, proprietary schools in our community. Many are not accredited. The saddest thing in my, and why I'm so um, passionate about this, and, I, and I'm telling you this because I want you to carry the message to the community as well, um, about this is that I get students coming to me, they've taken a semester or two at one of the proprietary schools. They paid a lot of money. They usually gone into debt with student loans. I've had students come to me with twelve or fourteen thousand dollars in student debt and ask if they can transfer into my program. And I have to tell them that I can't even accept their credit because they are in an unaccredited program. And in the health sciences, all of our programs are not only accredited by a regional accrediting body that accredits our district, but also separately accredited in each of the various fields. So nursing, uh, medical assisting, all of these have either license or accreditation from an entity that certifies them, sort of like the Good Housekeeping Seal of Approval. They will not allow me to take credits from a program that has not been, uh, that's not accredited. And so these students come to me, they're not, they haven't got what they need to be successful, they have huge debt, and I have to tell them basically that we're gonna help you start from scratch. The good news is it's only gonna cost you another, somewhere between two and $5,000, a lot less than you've already spent, but you're going to have to go through this in order to make that happen. I wanna see us teach people a little bit more about the value of the community college education. At 28 years old, I was found myself as a single mother, divorced, and uh, no college education. Grew up in southeastern Ohio, rural Appalachia area. Girls in the early 70s didn't go to college so much. But at 28, I went back to college, at a community college. An advisor got me by the hand and told me I needed to have a credential. I took a couple classes that I did at work, and it worked. But I needed a credential, so I earned that associate degree in math and science. And frankly, what many of our students need to earn, the confidence that they can go on and that they can do this. A lot of students don't know that. I earned that confidence, and next, a bachelor's, a master's, a PhD, a law degree, and a postdoctorate in business law. None of that would have happened for me without the community college. None of that would have happened for my daughter but for the community college. She earned her associate degree, a bachelor's degree, and then a law degree. So it's been good for my family, and I want to make sure that other families in our community know that it's equally as good for them. Thank you very much. Dr. Norris, I turn the floor back to you. Thank you, Betty. Um, I just want to make a couple of comments about some of the things that uh, Dr. Young uh, just mentioned. I do have some experience with the didactic portion of the RN program at the A League campus when A League was under the Southwest College. And I'll be the first to say I wasn't so sure that was going to be a good thing. I said, they may not even come and enroll. Who wants to go sit in an auditorium and look at monitors? Right? Well, let me tell you, I was never so happy to be so wrong because it was full from day one. And uh, she spoke about showing her age. Well, let me show my age because <laughs> students want to apply online. They want to get their schedule online. They want to take their courses online. And by tomorrow, they will be graduating online, I'm sure. But uh, whatever the case, we'll have commencement online. But um, th this is right up the alley of all of our students who want and expect 
to get things in a different way. And we normally call these hybrid courses. Uh, they go partly to class in person and partly they can take online. So I can see the success of what's going to come once we get these up and running here in Missouri City. The majority of the students that attend Coleman College right now are from Southwest College. And the majority of those are from Fort Bend County. Okay, so now we are bringing it home. And hopefully, you know, the sooner the better. And I'm very excited about getting this up and running. And we've been looking forward for a long time to, to get this going. Um, we really would like very much for our business community, as, as Dr. Young said, to be really involved as partners. We need to be able not only to educate our citizenry, but all of our employees who need a career ladder. We'd like to invite our businesses to a website that we're gonna create that's called Friends of HCC, where uh, those companies who have tuition reimbursement for employees will have their logo on our website and anyone, anybody who wants to know about your company can just click on that logo and it goes straight to your website. So it's really free advertising both ways. But the main thing is that we want to be able to offer opportunities not just for the unemployed or the young high school recent graduate, but those who are employed because education is lifelong. And um, I, I often tell everybody, and I'll be very brief because I know we all need to leave, but uh, my children tell me, uh, Mom, you've got your PhD just in time for your social security check. <laughs> so, but guess what? I didn't give up, okay? And, and I commuted to Bryan College Station, I want you to know, and held a full-time job. So um, I'm very proud of it, and I do believe the richness in our life comes from what we put into it. And learning is forever. So that's what we want to, you know, want to offer this community. We also will have some non-credit short-term certificate programs that we hope to offer in this area in nurse aid, EKG, and phlebotomy. And those are uh, short-term certificate courses for those persons who want to just go uh, 12 weeks, 16 weeks, uh, for depending on the program. So that's another department, and uh, but they will also be offered to the same location. Um, we would like very much to have internship opportunities for our students, not only in the health professions, but we have a huge business um, component in our college and very successful. Uh, especially our accounting program, which is renowned uh, for the, the students and the quality of the students who come out from that program. And so they need internship opportunities. They can be paid or they can be unpaid. Either way. Go ahead. Um, we would like very much for you to contact us at some point. Uh, contact me. Um, uh, leave a message in either of those numbers or um, often at five uh, of our campuses. I am, I am in 382 square miles in two counties and I work with seven mayors. So, and I work with primarily two superintendents, but, but I have uh, three superintendents that I have contact with. So you can catch me, I will return your call and um, we want to be business partners, but we truly want to be friends. And I know with Councilman Smith, we've met us several times, and he has really been a, a, a strong voice for this community. And I thank you for your input and your insight into the direction that we really need to move in. And uh, I look forward to continuing our relationship. I hope that you'll visit us if you haven't gone to the campus. It's a great campus and lively and you're always welcome if you want to bring a group over if you want to have a meeting there uh, we are open to anything that the community needs that's why we have community in community college thank you so much